Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got something a little different for us here. Recently, a company named JoyaLens reached out to me and offered to send me their JL246MS digital microscope for a review. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. To be fully transparent, JoyaLens did send me this microscope for free and I will be keeping it after making this review video. Other than that, I will not be receiving any kind of payment and I intend on giving my completely honest opinion on this microscope as someone who's just now getting started with digital microscopes such as this one. Inside the box, the microscope comes in a couple of pieces, the main ones being the screen and lens assembly, brackets and main arm structure pieces, the base, and all the other accessories such as cables, power adapters, lenses, among some other things. With all of the parts out of the box, assembling this microscope is a process that I think is super simple. In fact, minus some smaller, optional bits such as the metal clips that you can attach to the base of the microscope, the entire assembly was toolless, which is always a welcome time saver. With the microscope assembled, let's go over the basic features and build quality of this thing. On the base, there are two LED lights that are mounted on little gooseneck arms, and I'll admit that originally I was wondering whether or not these gooseneck arms would be good at all. Some gooseneck arms are too stiff, too loose, too springy and overall disobedient. Considering the price of this microscope setup, which is only 150 US dollars on Amazon, links in the description, I was afraid these goosenecks might be of the annoying kind. However, I can very gladly say that I was proven wrong and that these little gooseneck lights adjust and hold their position great. Absolutely a point there. Having good lighting on your subject is crucial and these lights should be more than capable of being adjusted to provide that good lighting on whatever you're observing under the microscope. Moving up a little more to the main adjustments and stand movements. The stand stand is nearly entirely made of what I think is cast aluminum, though I'm not entirely sure. In any case, it feels more than sturdy enough for what it holds, though adjusting the stand isn't the nicest feeling experience. Personally, when using this microscope for soldering, which is what I'll be doing most of the time, the roughness of these adjustments probably won't bother me too much, as I'll likely set it once depending on the board I'm working on and leave it there. In any case, that's something that was worth mentioning. It's overall okay, but it could be nicer. I will give credit where credit is due though and say that the focus slash fine height adjustment knobs feel really nice to turn with some good resistance. So setting the focus precisely with these control surfaces was very easy, which I'm happy to see. When it comes to the screen and lens assembly, there's only one axis of adjustment tilt. I think that this is fine as I don't really need the microscope screen on any articulating arm and I also think that that's something no one should expect at this price point. Furthermore, if one was to want their screen off to the side or very adjustable, there is a mini HDMI port that you can use to connect the microscope to an external monitor. More on that in a second. On the screen and lens assembly, we've also got a micro SD card slot for onboard recording, as well as a micro USB port for power and a computer connection. I didn't test out the computer USB connection and software, but it is there as an option if that's something that you might find useful. The only complaint on the screen and lens assembly is that it does feel very plasticky. It's quite lightweight and overall not the most durable feeling thing, so I wouldn't go throwing this microscope around due to that. Then again, if you're throwing your microscope around, if it breaks, it's probably on you as these aren't meant to be chucked around. That's most of the build quality stuff out of the way. I'll mention some more specific build quality aspects as I go about using the microscope throughout the rest of the video, but the overall verdict is that it's not the most robust feeling thing I've ever felt, but for $150 with the image quality it offers, I think that it's more than acceptable as long as you take care of your stuff. Speaking of image quality, how about we get this thing fired up and take a look at a PCB. I've got this little board that I pulled from a broken five and a quarter inch DVD drive and it's got some minuscule components on it. So let's take a look at that under the microscope. I chose to start out with lens L because of the large amount of magnification it offers. And while on that, let's quickly talk about the lens swapping mechanism because it could be improved. To swap the lens, there are two thumb screws on either side of it that you need to unscrew, and then the lens can just fall out. The mechanism absolutely works to keep the lenses in place, though when switching it, it can be a bit annoying to have to remove and reinsert two screws that aren't the shortest things in the world. The mechanism feels almost like it's an afterthought. Some kind of mechanism where you can insert the lens and twist it to keep it in place wouldn't be too hard to implement and would make lens changing so much easier. Pretty much like a proper camera lens mount, though maybe or maybe not with the latch button. 
If what you're doing requires switching lenses all the time, I can see this mechanism being a nightmare. Thankfully, the three lenses included in this microscope kit are mostly quite versatile, so I think that in many cases a lens like lens A, which I'll check out in a moment here, would be completely sufficient for a wide range of work. But the lens change mechanism isn't the greatest, so that's something that's important to keep in mind. Anyway, with lens L installed onto the microscope, let's fire it up and see how the image looks. I'll be honest, the image quality that this microscope was able to offer was genuinely amazing to me. The image is nicely sharp when in focus, the two LED lights on the base are more than bright enough to keep the subject well illuminated, and the screen is also nicely vibrant and sharp. All great things. We'll have to look closer at the image quality once this scope is hooked up to an external monitor, and once we have some recorded video from it, but so far, for working with the scope and using its inbuilt screen, this looks genuinely great. Next, I went ahead and quickly tested the stability of the microscope. Obviously, the perceived shaking on the screen will be different based on the amount of magnification one is using, but with this pretty massive amount of magnification using lens L, the microscope was acceptably stable when hitting my desk. Light medium taps barely showed up on the monitor, if at all, though heavier hits were certainly noticeable. Since the lens is directly attached to the screen, touching the screen at all shook the image quite noticeably. So I can imagine using the buttons on the screen while recording will probably become quite noticeable. In finality though, it was a pretty decent showing in rejecting taps and vibrations of the table, so the image is unlikely to be shaking all over the place when working with the scope. If I had to describe this on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give it a 7. Though the screen built in on the microscope is great, I've mentioned that it has an HDMI output which can be used to connect it to an external monitor, so let's give that a test. With the microscope connected to the external monitor, I can say with confidence that even on a 22 inch display as compared to a 7 inch display, the video quality was still really good. I was playing around a little bit on the board with the scope hooked up to my monitor and the amount of clear magnification I was able to get like this was truly amazing. I was actually able to see what I was doing when it came to messing with super tiny stuff, such as scratching the solder mask off of this tiny trace. Very pleased with the external monitor functionality on this microscope. I then switched the lens back to lens A so that we could be a little more zoomed out, as the view lens L provides is incredibly zoomed in. Very useful for some things, but when soldering most of the time, a little less zoom which can be achieved with lens A is more suitable. Lens A was still very sharp and the image was good looking, which is great to see. I decided to pull out this old CPU that I cracked the die of for some photography project, and I guess my camera was still set to autofocus when I was trying to record my monitor, so I wasn't really able to capture the amount of detail I could see in the die. But you'll have to take my word for it when I say it was, once more, really impressive. Also, some of the pins on the back of this chip are bent, so I took a look at them and really think that if I ever need to repair a CPU or CPU socket, this microscope will be instrumental in the process. Also, quickly take a look at this hard drive head here. Once more, my camera wasn't focused good on the monitor, but I think it was really cool to see how the reed head gets so close to the platter that it's catching the dust gathered here and putting some little smudges or scratches on the platter. Now it's time for something that I'm sure a fair few of us are waiting for. I know I'm excited to know how it does here. Let's see how the image that it can record onto a micro SD card looks. Not having to record by filming a screen and also not having to use the capture card I have, which is hot garbage, would be amazing. So let's see what the image quality is like. With the 32 gig micro SD card inserted, I hit record and started messing around with reflowing a couple solder joints on this board. First off, doing this soldering felt stupidly easy. And before I had this microscope, I really don't think I would have been able to do this at all. So as a tool, I can definitely say that this is going to change a lot of the stuff I'll be able to do, which is awesome. As for image quality, well, you can be the final judge, though I think it's really great. It recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS, which you won't be able to see this on YouTube because I export at 30 FPS, but still very nice. There is a 15 minute recording cap though, but at least in my case, I observed that it started another recording automatically immediately after the previous one reached 15 minutes. Whether or not that's something that can be counted on is something I'm not sure of yet, but it was nice of it to not cut and not come back. Still, 15 minutes is pretty short, so it would be nice to have seen a longer recording length. One of the last things I want to test this microscope out on is observing some slides. I didn't expect this microscope to be able to do this, but it includes a lens that is specifically designed for this purpose, and it included a couple slides, so let's give it a test because why not? I installed lens D, which is designed to work within the 4 to 5 millimeter distance range, so definitely the least versatile of the lenses, but absolutely intended for usage with slides. I pulled out some of the slides from the small set which is provided with the microscope and looked at them under it. All of the slides looked pretty 
pretty decent under the microscope, which is also great to see. Though I will say that the included slides aren't of the highest quality, they should really be considered a nice extra, so that's okay. And they are glass slides, which is nice. Finally, I've got one more thing that I'm going to talk about with this microscope, because I mentioned earlier that pressing the buttons on the screen assembly can cause some shaking in the image. There is an included remote, and this remote can do pretty much everything the screen can, such as digital zoom that goes up to 3x, recording, photo taking, dimming and brightening the lights, and a few other things. So let's conclude this review on the microscope now. I think that for 150 US dollars, which is what it costs on Amazon at the time of making this review, it's totally worth it. Especially for someone who doesn't have a microscope for their work on smaller things, this will be awesome. I've never really done SMD soldering, and a part of that is because I can't see what I'm doing well. I've still got really good eyes, especially up close, but the solder joints on those boards are just tiny. This microscope is going to allow me to actually see what I'm doing, and therefore, allow me to do it. That alone makes me think it's worth the cost for someone who's soldering. I can't really say too much on it if you're someone who's looking at getting a microscope just to observe slides, as I'm not a microscope expert or anything, but I think it did a pretty decent job at it. Running back over the build quality of the microscope, it's built all right. The main stand part of it is solid feeling, but doesn't adjust the smoothest, and the screen is very plasticky, which isn't my favorite. The gooseneck lights are very well built though, and the base is quite solid. What it lacks occasionally in build quality, I believe it makes up for in image quality and functionality. This microscope really packs in a lot of features, and even then, it still manages to afford really good looking image quality, at least to my eyes. In the end, I think that this microscope is a solid microscope for someone who doesn't want to spend a ton of money on one, and who may want it for PCB repair, watch repair, or any other kind of detailed work. I definitely recommend this microscope to a friend, because I think it's a solid product. I'll have non-affiliate purchase links in the description if you're thinking about buying this microscope. That's all I have for you in this video. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy it, and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.